আপনাদের সকলকে আমি আবারও আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি আমাদের আজকের ক্রিমিনাল ল বিষয়ক আইনি অনুষ্ঠান ক্রিমিনাল জাস্টিস প্রোগ্রাম দেখবার জন্য আমি আজাম এন্ড কো সলিসিটার্সের প্রিন্সিপাল সলিসিটার সাফিউল আজম এবং আমার সাথে আছেন সে দীর্ঘ পঁচিশ বছরেরও বেশি অভিজ্ঞতা সম্পন্ন ব্যারিস্টার আমার কলিগ ব্যারিস্টার লিন টাউনলি দর্শক ব্যারিস্টার লিন টাউনলির সেই পরিচিতির কোনো সীমা নাই উনি আপনার এদেশের যে সিপিএস আছে ক্রাউন প্রসিকিউটিং প্রসিকিউশন সার্ভিস সেখানে ম্যানেজার এই পজিশনে অনেক বছর কাজ করেছিলেন উনি লন্ডন ইউনিভার্সিটি যারা বিপিটিসি যারা ব্যারিস্টারি পড়াশোনা করে তাদেরকে পড়ান উনি কোর্টে জাজ হিসাবে বসেন এবং শুধু কোর্টের জাজ না উনি ইউকেতে যে উইমেন ব্যারিস্টার অ্যাসোসিয়েশন আছে ওই অ্যাসোসিয়েশনের প্রেসিডেন্ট আমরা দুজনে সেই খুবই একটা পাবলিসিটি নিউজের মধ্যে বহুল প্রচারিত সেই কেস বিবিসি এবং বিভিন্ন নিউজ মিডিয়াতে পাবলিশ হয়েছিল সবাই এই জানা আছে প্রায় দেশের সেই জিমি সাবল কেসের উপরে এই কেসের মধ্যে কি হয়েছিল তার বিরুদ্ধে এলিগেশন আসছিল পলিশ রিপোর্টের মধ্যে বলছে যে প্রায় দুশো চোদ্দটার মতো তার বিরুদ্ধে ক্রিমিনাল ইনভেস্টিগেশন হয়েছিল এবং সেইটা হয়েছিল আপনার আঠাশটা পুলিশ ফোর্সে এইটার মধ্যে কাজ করেছিল এবং সেটা ঘটনাগুলো ঘটেছিল সেই উনিশশো সাল থেকে দুই সাল পর্যন্ত এবং সেই ভিক্টিমগুলোর মধ্যে ছিল আপনার অ্যাবাউট সেভেন্টি রিপোর্টে বলা আছে চিলড্রেন ছিল এগুলো অনেকগুলো হয়েছে আপনার মেডিকেল স্টাবলিশমেন্টের মধ্যে তার মানে হাসপাতালে রোগীদেরকেও সে করেছিল লিন উই গো ব্যাক টু দ্য টাইম লাইন ইয়ার বাই ইয়ার ম্যানি ম্যানি অ্যালিগেশনস অ্যাগেনস্ট দিস পপ স্টার দিস ভেরি ফেমাস পার্সন চ্যারিটেবল ওয়ার্ক who did and raised 40 million and who became top of the pop and who was knighted. Give some more of the allegations against him in many years ago what police has revealed. Okay, well, um, the... Uh, the problem is with the early allegations um nothing was done about them so there's just um police reports available they never went to trial so there was the um there was the alleged uh, sexual assault I don't know of what 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 type it was um but it was some sort of sexual assault in 1955 um on a young person again um don't have any further details then in 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 1960 um there was the allegation um about the young uh, the sexual assault on the 10 year old boy who came for the o- autograph yeah um at jimmy savile's hotel and then in um 19 uh, 1964 65 66 sort of the mid the mid 1960s um we we know he was uh that was the time when he started to prolifically abuse people and that coincided with his starting work at the bbc and also volunteering at a number of hospitals um and the peak period of the offending uh started in 1966 um and um there's lots of of examples of offending going on from 1966 through into the the, the 80s 
So there's records in 1970 of uh, uh, he abused a lot of girls at a, a school in Surrey that he visited regularly. So unusually, it's, it's actually quite unusual for um, a sexual offender, as it were, to, to abuse everybody. Normally, um, they go for one particular, you know, age group or sex, but he abused young boys, young girls, and and uh, certainly female adults as well. So it was across the, the range of the wide range of abuse. So um, we also know a part, there was the, the um, abuse going on at the girls' school. And then in 1972, um, the police again uh, uncovered records, um, a sexual assault on a 12-year-old boy and, and two similar young girls who were attending um, a recording of that show, Top of the Pops. So there was, uh, there was assault on the boy and two girls. And um, then in the, it, during the 1980s, um, uh, there was a, a female victim um, made a report to the Metropolitan Police in London that she'd been assaulted by Jimmy Savile in a car park um, at the BBC. Um, the uh, the file for that um, was not uh, located. Uh, there was some record of it, but the full details were not known. And the officer who was put in charge of that case had passed away by the time that the police were looking at it um, in uh, in uh, sort of 2011. So that's all that's known about. But that that's probably, I would say, the tip of the iceberg because at that time um, people were reluctant to report uh, sexual offences, particularly against someone who was famous because they probably wouldn't have been believed. And also uh, at that time, um, it wasn't publicized. So so young people particularly might not have known that they were actually being abused because um, uh, they weren't, uh, they, they, they didn't have the vocabulary or the knowledge to know that. Okay, let me go to something different. Uh, I can see uh, all these things, investigations, all these reports are coming after his death. And who inherited Savile's estate? I can see his estate was worth 3.3 million. Dashok, par estate er velucilo, 3.3 million. A few friends and relatives named in Savile's will received a small amounts of money. That quite a bundu bandha bevong atyosha janra kisuta poisha pehe chilo. Sabchayate borole his Rolls Royce. He had a fleet of Rolls Royce lean. Uh, you see there is a comment here. The new owner who has purchased his um, Rolls Royce, he is from Poole in Dorset, said he bought the vehicle over the telephone on a whim. But now his plans to hire it out for wedding and children's parties are ruined. The only the only way that car will sell is to get the Savile name off of it and try to sell it for seventy thousand if I am lucky, he said. So he's telling, he bought it, that Rolls Royce, to use it for the wedding and then children's parties. The plan has been, the shock, the plan ruined, the plan is lost, the plan is lost. The plan is Jimmy Savile, Rolls Royce, the king, the plan is not the plan. And the plan is not the plan. 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 ताहोले इटा हुच्छना एवं शे बोलते सिलो के आमी लाकी हो बो जो दी सेवेंटी थाउजेंड इफ आई कुड सेल इट फॉर एंड ही सेड लेन ही सेड द ओनली वे दैट कार विल सेल इस टू गेट द सेवल नेम ऑफ ऑफ इट एनी कमेंट वेल आई मीन क्लियरली नो वन वांट्स टू बी 
associated with him now at, at the time whenever his um, estate was being dealt with and his assets, remaining assets being sold, uh, the extent of the issue was had not been determined. And it was even, you know, it was even in question at that stage whether the allegations that had come out by the time of his death, whether they were they were ill-founded or whether they were true. So uh, at the time, the entrepreneur who bought uh, one of the Rolls Royces, and as you've said, he had many. I mean, he collected, he seemed to collect Rolls Royces. Um, I mean, during his lifetime, um, it's estimated that he he actually um, raised over 40 million pounds for charities. So actually his estate in, in terms of what he raised for charity during his lifetime was relatively modest <laughs> when, it, when it's compared to what he raised um, with the 40 million. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, he, he didn't leave large legacies to anyone. And um, I think the, the, the majority of his estate in the end um, went into a charitable trust which was distributed uh, around um, you know good causes hospitals and the likes in Leeds because that's where he was born um, so the money in the end um, a lot of it was able to be used for, for a good cause but as regards the actual Savile name and the legacy it is now so tainted that you know, if you own something, it, it's almost on, on a par with having, um, you know, Nazi memorabilia. It, it, it isn't something that um, you can use with, with general society uh, as something that people would want to be associated with. So it, anyone who, who bought any of the cars um, that are associated with them, I, I mean, no one, if, if they knew the provenance of the car would obviously want to use it as a wedding car and certainly not for for a children's party it would just be completely inappropriate for for obvious reasons dashak ei byaktitto ta jimmy sabal shei apnar leeds e tar jonmo grohon ebong leeds e okhane cathedral jekhane ache shekhane tar funeral hoyechilo এবং উডল্যান্ডস সেমেট্রি যেটা আছে সেখানে তাকে সমাহিত করা হয়েছিল হান্ড্রেডস অফ ফ্যান্স গ্যাদার্ড শত শত মানুষ তাকে দেখতে আসছিল সিটি সেন্টারের মধ্যে তাদের এই ডিজেকে এই টেলিভিশন ব্যক্তিত্বটাকে তার ফাইনাল জার্নিটা তাকে গুড বাই বলার জন্য সেই আপনার সে যখন মানে মারা গিয়েছিল তার ফিউনারেলের সময় এবং অনেকেই অনেক বড় বড় নাম করা লোকজন তার এই ফিউনারেলে আপনার অ্যাটেন্ড করেছিল ইউসি দা his another uh, way of his fundraising and his another reason he was very famous i think he attended many marathons well he claimed i think um i don't know that there's any definitive record but he claimed to have run um hundreds of marathons again for charity a lot of it was for um, he was a, the primary fundraiser and awareness raiser for Stoke Mandeville, which was the, um, which was, um, you know, the, the, the most well-known spinal injury hospital probably in the world. Um, and it, it did a groundbreaking research. And a, a lot of it was funded by, by what he was doing. And he, he used to dress up in a silver cape and a silver top hat. He was quite flamboyant. I mean, obviously now when, when you look back with hindsight, it, it all looks very, very strange. But at the time, if you take it in the contemporary time, the fashion of the day, and also the fact that he was 
um, eccentric but acceptable back at that time. Um, he he had he was iconic so he was recognized he used to run the marathons you know wearing a cape and what have you and he, he used to wear large glasses you know with stars on them all very, very sort of recognizable there isn't really you cannot you cannot compare him to anyone today it's just it's off its time um mm. but he was he was widely recognized and he was one of the first i mean now i mean uh, running and uh, running and marathons and raising money for charity everyone does it it's across the board and but he was doing he was one of the first to use the the sort of the vehicle of running a marathon to raise a lot of money for charity so uh very he was very well known for that and and they used to televise it was on the news that jimmy savile for example had run the london marathon and had raised you know thousands and thousands of pounds through sponsorship for, for these hospitals and for his charities. And um, so he was the first, you know, large fundraiser. I mean, nowadays everyone kind of does this because you can do it over online vehicles like GoFundMe, just given all of that. But this was in the days before none of that was heard of. It was in pre-internet days. And, you know, there were not as many well-known people or celebrities or stars or whatever you want to call them as there are today. So mm -hmm. it was a big deal when someone like him ran in the marathon, he was one of the first celebrity people to do that. Nowadays, a lot of well-known people run and it's not a big deal. But back at that time, it was a huge deal that, that someone from the television or the radio was also running the marathon and was raising money um, for charity. So he got a lot of publicity for the charities. Um, and you know that was that he did the marathon you know for many many years and mm -hmm. he must have been well into his 50s uh, maybe you know even well into his 60s and he was still running um the marathons for for these various charities and actually raising a lot of money and raising the profile which was why he was accepted um you know by the royal family by uh, by government by the bbc because he was in in his time was was seen as a very positive figure and of course all that changed um uh, after all, all of the extent of the abuse uh the abuse scandal came out most of which was you know after he passed away yeah yeah lucky man he did not need to face the trial for these numerous allegations it's not one yeah. to hundreds of them hmm? yeah uh, uh, you know if he had had survived um you know age uh, it, it is not necessary it can be but it's not necessarily a barrier to prosecution so you know he may well have uh, have faced whatever was left of his life um, you know, in, in prison and, uh, you know, having to be protected in prison because, of course, sex offenders, particularly ch uh, people who have abused children, uh, have to be put on protective uh, wings in prison because they're, they're at risk, plus the fact that he was, uh, you know, a celebrity would have put him at increased risk if he was in prison. So, you know, that's one way of looking at it. You know, he was spared all of that because of... Uh, because of his uh, his death before you know any of the the allegations really the extent of them be became known to the police um, and certainly to the public. Yeah. The shock, she Bishal case, Jimmy Savul case, Bohul Procharito case, a desher mudde, she quiet doshok dore tar a historical sexual abuse, assault gula. এবং এগুলো একের পর এক শত শত এগুলা একের পর এক পুলিশ আপনার বের করেছে এবং রিপোর্টে তারা পাবলিশ করেছে সব কিছু আমরা এই কেসের উপরে নেক্সট সেগমেন্ট আমরা বলবো তার যখন মারা গিয়েছিল তার যখন ফিউনারেল কারা কারা অ্যাটেন্ড করছিল এবং এই কেসের উপরে আরও মানে যে ঘটনাগুলো সে করেছিল ওগুলোর উপরে বলবো নেক্সট সেগমেন্টে সবাই আমাদের সাথেই থাকুন আমি আজাম অ্যান্ড কো সলিস্টার্সের প্রিন্সিপাল সলিস্টার শাফিউল আজাম এবং আমার সাথে আছেন আমার কলিগ ব্যারিস্টার লিন টাউনলি